Christ. Thank you, away. Thank you, cheerleaders. <laughs> Who thinks that Phil Hansel make a great cheerleader? Phil, stand up. That's what a modern day cheerleader looks like. <laughs> oh, bless you guys. Thank you so much, Tony, for allowing me to share for 40 minutes. It's a real blessing. Now, what I'm going to do, because, I mean, Louis was sharing yesterday about how Edna, you know, gives him the eyes. But, you know, this is an experienced, seasoned man, minister, father in the house. He just gets the eyes. I still get the all-black hacker. Get the eyes, the tongue, the this, the stamping. So, so what I've done strategically is I've said, darling, let's sit to the back this morning. So my wife's at the back, so I can't get the hacker. I can't quite see you, darling. What did you say? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> No, no, so I'm going to put a timer on. I know, I know, I've already wasted, I know, I'm going to put a timer on, bear with me. So I've been asked to speak just very quickly whilst I put the timer on. Oh, no, I have actually put it on 30 minutes, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> it's the prophetic phone. So... I've just been asked to share about being compelled by love in the area of business and uh, it's such a big topic, such a big area and what I want to do is try to drill it down very quickly into one particular facet of the kingdom that God's, that's a huge passion of my heart and something hopefully that I can impart this morning to you guys and so just a quick bit of background, my name's Dan, I'm uh, one of the pastors and elders in Jubilee Church in Maidstone, so I've been on the eldership team for 12 years now, I was the younger elder, I'm now no longer the younger elder, I'm more of the bald elder, and, um, or the bald eagle as I like to refer to myself, no one else calls me that, um, so, you know, I've been, I have, I've always had a dual kind of church ministry in that mountain and business ministry, if that makes sense, so I'm going to come this morning from the perspective of the kingdom of God. That supersedes, that carries through everything. It's our values, our DNA. It's what we do. It's how we do it. So I want to talk to us as kingdom leaders this morning. And I want to get down to some nitty gritty pretty quickly because I really believe that we're in an exciting stage of, of church life. I think the, the, the foundations are shifting in how we do things. And I want to start by just a couple of statistics. And I've got a PowerPoint to keep me on point. So here we go. So the first one is this. I read this the other day, and this is from something... Um, called the NATSEN, which is the UK's largest independent research organisation. And it looks at trends and, and things all across the globe. But I want to just read a couple of things out of, these, out of these boring graphs for you. That effectively, if you look at the, the, the chart there, the no religion mark in the last, from 1982 to 2016, has risen from 30% to over 53% in the UK. That's almost doubled in that space of time. So when we're talking about, many of us were trained in the 60s, 50s, 70s, 80s, you know, our training and our, our theology, our worldview, what we were brought up in, in the 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties, is no longer applicable to the way people connect with church. It's just the truth. It's just the reality. It's just the way it is. Over 40% of over 75s, as in people over 75 years old, in the UK still would uh, affiliate themselves with the Church of England. When it comes to 18 to 24 year olds, that's just 3%. That's 3%. Now, this, this, this research hasn't been done by Christians. This is a social research organization. And these statistics came out at the back end of 2016 and were published only last week. So this is the kind of real latest data that's come out. If you look at the next slide. If you look at re religious affiliation by age, the purple bar is um, no religion. So if you look at the 18 to 24 year old age range, that you can see the 3% that would we'll look at the Church of England Anglican, and we're looking at over 70% have no religion at all. That's who we're talking about when we're talking about raising the next generation. We cannot bring our paradigm into their experience. We have to bring the kingdom of God into their reality. There's a huge, huge difference. And I'm so passionate about seeing a generation being raised up and released in the marketplace because that is where the gospel was first released. The gospel was empowered with the disciples in the upper room and released straight away into the community. So if we go into the next slide, keep me on point. And this, this is one of the most scary slides I've read in a long time. So that purple graph there looks at peop people in the UK, so all, the whole population that was researched and surveyed, looks at their attitude towards um, 
same-sex marriage, abortion, all of the key topics of the day, the blue line is the Christian attitude towards it. There's no difference. Who's discipling who? I read that one graph and that freaks me out. That is, that's a reality check as to somehow in, in the way that society is being, we are being impacted by society rather than impacting the moral fabric of society. And one of the things that really excited my heart about this in a kind of weird way was the way that the cotton values that we carry are true today as they were when these guys dreamed the dream all those years ago. You know, impacting every area of society, the priesthood of all believers, the kingdom of God, fathering and sonship, all of those things are so, so required and necessary for where we're at right now. The next generation are desperate for an authentic and meaningful encounter and experience of Christianity. Not our former methodology, but what they need to hear right now. So if we go on to the next slide. The Ecclesia is called out so it can stand out not so it can stand aside. And that is my passion, is to see the body of Christ stand out. We are called out of darkness into his marvellous light so we can stand out. We can be the light and salt into the marketplace, not so that we can stand aside and let the marketplace dictate to us. Society must not dictate to us how the kingdom of God works. And so I want to just share with you just some really quick Quick principles. So, next slide, please, Lee. The gospel and the marketplace cannot be separated. I think that is so fundamental to what we do, what we do in business. I'm going to give you some examples later on. Is that we cannot separate the good news of Jesus Christ and of the rule and reign of God from the marketplace. We cannot separate it. You see, for many of us, and I say us, I'll talk to us as church leaders or leaders in that church mountain. You see that the the church mountain has become our marketplace rather than our family. And that's a fundamental error. The church mountain has become our marketplace rather than just our family. You see, the church mountain, the ecclesia, the, the called out ones, the senate, the family of God, we are called to operate as family, as government, but to be in that marketplace, to be salt and light in the community so that the world can see that greater is he that is in us than is in the world. And I think that is such a, a, a desperation and a cry of the heart of what the next generation want. So let me just backtrack. And in business, I run a digital media and technology company. So I go into companies, global brands, and what I do is we go in and we help them to adopt change via technology and digital marketing. So we go in and run all sorts of weird techie and geeky stuff. But I see every day on a daily basis how the Gen Zs and millennials are connecting with technology and communication. And the pace of change to which they evolve and which they move, we cannot keep up with. Except for one way, I really believe. And it's in the raising and sowing of sons. And in the next two and a half minutes, I want to just share some of my heart for that. Because I'm almost out of time. Next slide. I really believe we stand at an age in society where the 18 to 24 year olds and the Gen Zs are moving at such a pace that unless we raise up sons that are in that generation, that will become more, the church will become more and more polarized where we are standing over here preaching our thing and now moving over here consuming content at a rate of knots that we cannot even understand. I can run a Facebook campaign in my business and I can have 100,000 views within minutes. I can run a YouTube campaign and get half a million eyeballs on it within days. I can put a video on Vimeo and get 1.2 million views in about two weeks. Yet we're standing over here trying to gather people into our four walls. Things have changed. The goalposts have changed. The dynamics have changed. And I really, really believe that for us as mums and dads in the house, and that's what I so love about the values of cotton, as mums and dads in the house, it's our responsibility to grab that next generation, as Lou was sharing last night, and not only release them into their gifts and passions, but father them into their values and DNA. Father them with our core values and DNA because that is what's going to carry. If you look at all the research about Gen Zs, you see the millennial generation are the fast paced um, achieving generation. They're the guys that love the brands, love the tech, love what's going on, want to look good, look sharp, all of that stuff. You know what they say about Gen Zs? Is that they're so far removed from any truth, they're desperate for truth. They're so far removed from any reality, they're desperate for reality, which is why the enemy is using that for the sexual agenda, 
and the homosexual, all the agendas are happening with that generation. It's because there is absolute no truth or moral absolutes. So we have got to take a generation and begin to father them into that and sow them into that society. So at work, what do we do is I've got, I've got a small company. There's only sort of 14, 15 of us in-house and we outsource a lot of our work. The average production age of my staff is 25 years old. The average age of my management team is 28. The guy that I'm working to raise up as the next kind of MD within a company is 24. He's managing, multi, he's managing six figure accounts at board level at 24 years old. Why? Because I fathered him from 14. He did his work experience at 18. I took him on at 21. Put him through a process for three years and journeyed with him and his value base and his DNA base. So when he stands before the board of multi-million pound companies, which he's doing right now, he's standing there and his values are strong, his DNA is strong, and he's imparting something of the kingdom. We had an incredible thing happen a few weeks ago where um, over the last few years, I've been building a relationship with one of the key guys at number 10, at 10 Downing Street. And uh, he asked me to come in. So I went into number 10, I go through the door, I knock on the door, like thinking, what am I doing here? And he takes me down, he's, uh, he's uh, the senior guy in communications, the communications director, I can't obviously say his name. And so he takes me down into the bunker, into the war rooms of 10 Downing Street, where the Prime Minister would talk to the other ministers. And he said, Dan, share your heart with me. So I explained to him in his language about raising and releasing a generation. And he said, I'm, I'm on board. How do we do this? So he now wants to become a non-exec director at Wonderful, which is what I'm working through with Dave at the moment. That's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of influence God wants to have in society. So we've moved on to, we cannot keep up with the pace to change the political agenda and societal breakdown with a regime, programs and events. It's not going to cut it anymore. It has to be a fundamental DNA change. It has to be. It cannot just be events and programs and initiatives and outreaches. It's got to be something that as mums and dads in the house, we grab hold of and say, if everyone in this room grabbed hold of two people and said, I'm going to journey with you for three to five years to see God's best in your life, we will begin to see a multiplication of impact. Let's not stop looking for numbers in addition to come into the building. Let's look for multiplication in the marketplace. It's a big difference. I'm going to stop for 11 and a half minutes. So just to finish up. To finish up with, I want to read you an email from a guy that I've journeyed with for a number of years. And he said, because he's a bloke, he couldn't actually say it to me face to face, we had to do it over email. He said, I've been meaning to say this to you for ages, but I haven't got around to it, so I thought I'd write it down instead. I just wanted to thank you for seeing a glimmer of potential in me all those years ago. I was broken when I joined Wonderful, and your testing and pushing, though hard at times, was instrumental in my recovery. You have enabled me to have a career in the job that I love. Without the proving ground that Wonderful was, I wouldn't be able to do half the stuff I do. I love my job so so much and the pressure is really starting to pile on. Without your challenges and growth, I would be a mess right now. I'm just talking business here. Never mind all the stuff you did for so and so and I to restore our marriage. Without you guys, we'll be separated or worse by now. You would always be a dad in my life and I know you input into so many and doubt you get the thanks you deserve. You and Claire deserve medals for the work you do. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being a physical representation of Christ in my life. And that's... That's in no way to elevate an individual, elevate something, but that's the heart of what I'm talking about. And my passion and being compelled by love in the area of business is to take a generation and raise them up so that they can go into the areas of influence in the business community and absolutely make a difference. So thank you very much for listening. I hope that's helped inspire you and impart to you. And thank you, Tony.